Two. And I think we are live. Uh, hi, Yanni. How are you doing? Excellent. Excellent. Doing very well. Thank you. Uh, so that was a wonderful presentation. I first want to commend you on your ability to both do the how the user encounters the MMS, how the developer might be interested about how it works. And I feel like you've done, a, you've done a wonderful job of talking to absolutely everyone in our audience, whatever their skill level. So thank you so much for this. Yeah, that, uh, that of course, runs the risk of being, um, you know, uh, good for some, but excellent for none. But hopefully uh, the result is that people can get something out of it. Uh, I think it's very important to make sure that everyone feels that they have access to Emacs, they have access to MMS, that they can do this to in whatever capacity they want. It's it's for everyone. That's a I, I really believe that. Yeah, and I understand this risk about having a talk that is kind of jack of all trades, but frankly, you've done a wonderful job of making it interesting for everyone. Because also, I think the parts worked really well, and people always had something to look forward in terms of their expertise of what particularly spoke to them. So thank you again. Um, what I'm going to do, we have about 14 minutes of Q&A. So I'll invite people, as I usually do, to add their questions in the Etherpad that you can find on the talks or on IRC. You can also join us with a, uh, in a discussion. I will make sure this time to ping Sasha to open the Q&A. Uh, can you open the EMMS? All right. And in the meantime, whilst we wait for people to join us in the room, I will start reading some of the questions off the pad. Um, so we had the first question about the music that we played during the launch break. And it's uh, it's one of our dear friends, Shoshin Grand Shang Ro, uh, a free album, Basement Days. I've, I've put the link in, um, in the pad. And we've been using uh, uh, Shoshin's music for the last three years, I think. And everyone, people are so excited. Some people say, why is it so noisy in the background? But it's just because there's one part of the different tracks that sounds like static. And mm -hmm. <laughs> it always gets people. We should probably do something about this. But frankly, it makes me laugh every time. Uh, something with the first actual question. Well, actually, it's a bit of a meme question. Uh, for the next Emacs cons, could we have an EMMS playlist to follow the talks along? Oh, that sounds that sounds like a, a, an excellent idea. But uh, I guess I'm wondering what they mean exactly by that. Is that a shareable playlist that we can uh, we can pass along and just uh, have people uh, go to a URL and just be able to play that. I think that's that's an excellent idea. It should be a relatively low bandwidth uh, process. And it's the it's typically the, the type of stuff that it was right off our alley. I'm thinking about uh, the ICS file that it produced for all the. Uh, uh, all the events that are related to Emacs, you know, the workshop that happened like mm. in Paris or in New York, LA, like Sasha compiles a list of all the events and when they happen, and then we provide this to everyone. And we can do very much the same with Emacs Conf. Like you could have a playlist for Emacs Conf 2023, where you get all the talks and perhaps also the Q&A sessions so that you can relieve the 16 hours of content that we're producing. That'd be great. And that's a great idea, I think. Absolutely. And if there are any uh, uh, limitations in the Emacs playlist structure that it, it, that things are missing in the playlist structure, then it would be a great impetus to implement those and extend the playlist structure. Because after all, it's Lisp. It really is, uh, you know, data and functions all mixed together. So we can we can do that. It would be uh, very interesting to dive into it and see what's missing. That would be. Uh, even more informative than what it can do. Great. All right, moving on to the next question. Uh, I like to use music and audiobooks in very different ways. With music, I like shuffling by artist. And with audiobooks, I want to read sequentially and pick it uh, and pick the same playlist over a couple of days or weeks. Do you have any tips for using these two opposing media's workflow? Zzz. Yes. So um, I have similar situations where I have very uh, long uh, endurance races that I watch, which I do, uh, all my media consumption is done via uh, EMMS. I also listen to music. And so there's also a middle in between. There's, there's one end in which you have uh, popular music 
these are standalone songs that are typically three to four minutes long and they are best consumed in a random you know order because they are designed around you know a commercial radio distribution so i guess i'm dating myself by saying radio but you know all the of that in the middle there are uh, longer works uh like um musicals and classical where these are uh units where they might be very long but you would have several tracks that that you do want to have one after the other and you want to be able to stop and go to the next uh to the next track and then at the very very other end you have extremely long form format which is included in a single file such as an audiobook a movie uh a tutorial that you're watching uh, or in my case uh you know a 24 hour the 24 hours of le mans uh, which is the 24 hour race which you know that's what one heck of a file so that is one of the reasons uh emms has uh, a number of elements such as the meta playlist mode and multiple playlists so uh, i would say that they would open uh, a number of playlists uh, in emms generate a number of playlists that have uh, uh, each class of of uh, media so uh, the shorter form songs the more pop songs you have on uh, in one playlist where you can sort, shuffle it, you know, save it, do whatever you want. Then a separate playlist for the long form stuff. Sometimes that playlist will have even only one uh, one file in it if it's uh, long enough. Then have a key combination which takes you directly to one playlist or the, uh, or the other. And within the long form playlist, looking at the bookmarking function, of emms which is designed around being able to save a particular pop, pop, uh, stopping point or multiple stopping points bookmarks in the audio and being able to jump back into that uh, audio the point with uh, to remember about the bookmarking feature is that um sometimes it it, it really depends on you have to have the right back end not all back back ends with uh replaying not all types of media uh, work well with a bookmarking function and you know bug reports welcome but also there are other backends uh, such as MPV where you can configure it that when you uh, quit playing uh, the song or the media with you know with a key internally so sometimes the back end has to continue uh, playing uh that that song uh that's that's what i do in order to uh, uh on one hand switch over to a uh, i want to hear I'm, I'm i'm coding i want to hear some music i go to my playlist of short songs then i'm sitting back and i want to watch a, a long form uh something from where i left off and there i go to the other playlist and use bookmarks or the features of uh, the the back end that i'm using Okay, thank you for the answer. Uh, we have about seven minutes and we have more questions, so that's great. Uh, moving on to the next one. Is there a way to search a music selection by lyrics? Assuming those lyrics are in the metadata or are available elsewhere, it would be neat to call songs up from the lyrics to the song. Perhaps is this implemented so that you can all aliases, uh, so, so they can use aliases for the song that you like, defining those aliases or shortcuts either inside or outside EMMS. Okay, so I think you've got two questions. First about the lyrics and then the aliases. Yeah, so um, it's effectively not possible to do right now. There's a sense in which it is, but not really. What actually uh, needs to happen? Uh, the, the problem is that the caching system is extremely naive it's just really a, a hash that's written to disk and uh maybe now with um sqlite uh integration or other or just the fact that uh, computers have a lot more uh speed and space than they used to have we need to expand the cache to be a lot more greedy and a lot more flexible so that we can store things such as lyrics in as part of the uh, metadata there's no reason not to do that um, 
unless your collection, your collection would have to be truly enormous in order to slow things down. Uh, we wouldn't even need to compress the uh, the lyrics in order to store them like that. But but that is a goal. So our our rewrite of the cache is in, is currently in progress, and the goal is to have a system where you can put any related information, including lyrics, uh, and map that to a particular piece of the media, be it a URL or a, uh, so you could have in any sense, you could have a URL to a lecture and the metadata associated will, will be, would be uh, uh, some text, some notes or, or, or something else like that. Right. So that was about the lyrics. I'm not sure how, how it answers the question about the aliases. I mean, you can still filter what you've mentioned about the cache. I think it's, uh, do we consider the aliases to be anything within the metadata? Um, no, you're right. It's, it, that, is a, that is a separate uh, uh, question. I don't have a great answer for that right now. Okay, great. Well, I will put a pin on this and we can mm -hmm. return to it. I mean, you can return to it at a later stage. Yeah. All right, moving on to the next question, then I'll just uh, will put a pin on this. All right, next question. Are there plans for managing metadata with online resource backends, i.e. Discogs or Music Brains? What about something like Beats in Emacs or part of EMMS? Yeah, so that's, uh, that's an active uh, discussion on the mailing list uh, right now. We don't want to uh replicate what beats does very very well in emms uh we don't want a clunky interface with beats uh we do want some kind of uh and so it's hard to tell exactly where to draw that line so the big answer is yes absolutely there is a plan to do that the details become complicated because um uh, for one thing the the back end, the, the, the database that Music Brain uh, uses, Acoust ID, I don't remember if Acoust ID is the binary or the database, but uh, that's actually for non commercial use only. So not only do you need to compile a piece of software on your uh, computer as a shim, which is you know, what you need to do in order to set up beats to do uh, fingerprinting, but um, it also crosses this line between completely free software to completely free software interfacing with a non-commercial only uh, uh, service. So a lot of the discussion that's going on now is what is the contour? Where where would be where we would be effective for EMMS to uh, do uh, management and where uh, and where not? For one thing, I would love to be able to, uh, one thing that we definitely would love to be able to do is when you hit E on a file and you get all the metadata to be able to then give a command to say, hey, play to Music Brains and see if you can improve that metadata. Do you have better uh, metadata, more complete metadata to, uh, uh, to complete that? That is definitely uh, in the pipeline. How do you best do it? That's discussion. Okay, uh, Yoni, we have about two minutes until we need to go to the next talk. Um, do, okay, I'll risk it. Uh, one more question and a short answer, if you can. Mm -hmm. um, have the developers considered using Emacs customized functionality to persistently store settings when using EMMS setup discover players? Yes, absolutely. Um, that's another active place, especially with the uh, uh, Discover players. How to do it exactly with annoying people um, and clobbering their own settings, we just need to be very careful about that. Yes, that that's in the coming releases. Yeah. All right, well, Yuri, thank you so much for your time. Uh, feel free to stay in the room. I see that some people have started joining on BBB. Um, if they have more questions, uh, feel free to unmute yourself and ask them live. Uh, Yoni, mm -hmm. uh, if I could ask you also to perhaps answer the question. I've put the link to the pad in the BBB chat. So if you look at the, uh, here, I think, we're not mirrored on BBB. If you look at the left, you should be able to see the chat and the questions. And if you could just answer the last question, that would be great. Uh, for us, on the general track, we will be moving to the next talk. 
And Yoni, do you have any last thing to say in 10 seconds? Thank everyone who put together the conference and thank you to everyone who uh, uh, helps with the MMS. All right, well, thank you so much, Yoni. We'll probably see you later. Bye-bye. Wonderful. And I think we are off air. Thank you so much, Yoni. I need to step out and go take care of the next talk. OK, wonderful. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. And just to, I forgot to mention, but you can still talk here and everything is still being recorded. So I'll see you Excellent. later. Bye-bye. Bye. Oh, hello. Wait, uh, you're still, did not hear you yet. You are currently the only person in this conference. Okay, can you hear me now? Okay. I can hear you now. Excellent. All right. I just wanted to say hi and thank you. I'm <clears throat> my name is Grant. I've you helped me contribute to EMMS maybe two or three years ago. Uh, I was trying to do the track tag stuff. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah. So oh, I just want to say for, thank you. Thank you for uh and going through that uh, entire process. I know that one of the things that happens is that people want to contribute, but it's not as slick as uh, GitHub and stuff like that, especially with the uh, copyright assignment. Objectively, it's not that. It's just harder than you know what they imagine it might be. Yeah. Well, I appreciate it. I think you're doing a wonderful job as a maintainer. I you know still hang out on the list and enjoy listening in on the discussion, so. Yeah, that's, uh, that's it. Um, being a product. If you're not super duper active, being their long-term people and to uh, find it easier and to continue contributing to the project if there's a consistency there, if there isn't a churn, if there is a, a, a kind of a, a core group. I, I guess uh, it's like uh, you think it's constant of Elizaretsky and, uh, and uh, RMS, whatever on the next mailing list. You, you know, okay, there are certain people that I think so. So thank you for that. That's very important. Yeah. That's, that helps. Yeah, I'm, uh, I feel like when I started using EMMS several years ago, it's, it's improved a lot since then. And I notice your focus on helping new users get started quickly. And I think the talk today will help with that too. So yeah, I want to put you know, the, especially the TLDR, like how to start it on the link that to the website, uh, find somehow that we can give on to prepare for that. And this together. Now, question for you, um, where would you like to see uh, EMMS go? Where do you see it land? What do you feel like? Uh, this is what this is we're sorely missing these things yeah i don't know i mean i picked it up because i both use it to play my music collection but also like i record my own music and i wanted mm. to be able to edit my metadata in emacs mm. because editing metadata elsewhere sucks um and so that's kind of why i got involved with that and i was like being able to edit metadata, um, especially for content that maybe you're creating or, or cause I have a, a bunch of files of just unlabeled stuff I've recorded on, you know, different recorders, things like that. So that's kind of where I was focusing on it. it. It's the only media tool that lets me do that. You know, I can play the music back and have quick editing. So, um, 
I know there was a couple of things we had talked about in terms of maybe improving kind of the user interface for the tag editor, mm -hmm. things like that. Um, so I don't have any grand visions for where EMMS should go. Um, I know pretty much all the things I've heard about it already, you, you can hook up to last or GNU FM, right? The Scrabbling service and all that kind of stuff. Um, I don't really feel like it's missing much, especially being able to choose the backends. It's, I guess, if anything, it's like the interface, like how can it be even more intuitive for users? Um, and I think that, you know, we need more people playing around with it, I guess. Yeah. Well, yeah, which is because I'm sure there are lots of people playing around with it, arriving at a conclusion, keeping it to themselves and moving on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which, uh, 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 I, and I know that a lot of bits of software put a send a bug report feature in and stuff like that, and no one uses those either. So that's yeah. uh, the frictional cost. I think the context switch for people between this doesn't work to actually formulating in words what what didn't work. It, it's that that is a very expensive context switch that most people will yeah. not. Uh, it is. will not do and we're poorer for that so uh yeah so i think that when we integrate music brains and other things like that into now of course music brains will probably uh it would be very funny if you if you pull up your stuff right something that you wrote and you say hey music brains match this and it's not there then it'll probably suggest some wild things yeah right? mm -hmm. i've because had that yeah, because there are um, well, uh, there was a system I was looking at its code for uh, uh, researching stuff for EMMS, and I'm trying to remember what it's name. It begins with a J. It's this media player, uh, free floss media player that it's a like a media server that can cast to a television and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And um, I asked it to automatically label things, and the results were horrible. It yeah. thought that half of my songs were movies. It uh, it thought that JPEGs were songs. It just it did some it did some incredibly. Uh, it's it's not a solved problem, I think. So the the what I'm thinking with uh, Music Brains and those services is that you hit a button and you have you get another pane with a suggestion mm -hmm. uh and you either and you can copy so you can say okay copy this and this and this field over or reject the suggestion and maybe get get another one so uh yeah i like that a lot that's more more like a, a diff right like you get the diff between the two and you can apply which changes you like yeah was it yeah. jellyfin is that Jellyfin, yeah. is that what, yeah. Jellyfin, yes. <laughs> yeah, and when that happened, did it like did it clobber all your metadata, or does it just label stuff? Oh, it, it, it SQLite thing somewhere inside okay. it, and the key to looking for really your your not allow me to do uh very easily so i was uh uh so you know on, on one hand it makes me feel oh uh, we're not the only ones dealing with this we're not the only ones struggling with this on the other hand would it be nice that's a paragon that we can look to and say this is a wonderful way of doing it let's incorporate as much of that uh, as we can yeah it's it's a tricky problem especially if you're modifying people's media files, you know, so. Yeah, I'm also very concerned that i for MMS because I'm old and curmudgeonly, essentially, in my, uh, in, in, in the way they do it. And honestly, I rarely ever, I use the MMS browser when I need to debug the MMS browser. I don't, I use very simple commands and I 
even rarely look at the the playlists that was one of the things because when i got into it originally when my eyesight started going so i had to rely less and less on gui uh interfaces so that was uh so to this day that's how i uh, use mms yeah it's interesting i remember um running into a browser bug because i think just my age like I want to be able to tab through and like that was a huge that, that changed recently right where you tab and it unfolds in the browser um but yeah I realized that people use EMMS in so many different ways just like any piece of Emacs there's <laughs> there's many ways to do it but um I appreciate your time I'm gonna actually put together this Christmas tree behind me so oh, wonderful yeah, just wanted to say hi, meet you in person, and uh, or in person. But yeah, yeah, so excellent. I appreciate it a lot, and we uh, generate some interest. In the way. Yeah, thank you. You were currently the only person in this conference. I'm going to have a look at the questions here. Let's see. So there is, um, I, okay. There's a question here. I like what you said about balancing the concern for software freedom with the worry that this might alienate the package user. I wonder if you have advice for other maintainers how to communicate this sort of thing diplomatically. Uh, yes, when you have to deny implementing a feature for a freedom reason, this in fact happens all the time. Uh, a recent example of this was um, a YouTube download, right? The YouTube download feature. Uh, at the time, that, uh, okay, so stepping back, the request was to have a YouTube download feature uh, integrated strongly into EMMS so that you put in a YouTube URL and you can download the video and play it. And the question isn't really whether you can chain YouTube download or, or one of those things into your uh, EMMS configuration. You can do whatever you want. But the question is, does EMMS actually uh, integrate with it really, really strongly to the extent where it tells you, oh, you don't YouTube download install, please go ahead and install that or, or whatever. And at the time we checked it, we found out that, you know, the version that we were looking at of the of YouTube download or, or YT DLP or whatever it was called, actually downloaded a, a good amount of proprietary JavaScript onto your machine and ran it just as if you were going on to the YouTube page, which is uh, not for me to tell people not to do if uh, if they want to do that, but it's absolutely uh, for me not to cause to happen on a user's machine without them. No one of the, no, the last thing that I want to do in the world is have a user inside Emacs press a, a button and have proprietary software get downloaded behind their back and run on their machine. That would be disastrous so uh we had to say no we had to say that's yeah, i'm sorry that's beyond the pale and in fact in doing so some people who uh were using this system said actually i had no idea it was doing this behind my back uh i thought it just magic got me the youtube video without any freedom issues i'm going to look into it or i'm going to stop using it so my advice would be um, stand firm and just be uh, not, not preachy. Don't tell people what they need to do. Be very clear about what you stand for and what the project stands for. And so they very clearly know where you stand. And I think that people actually appreciate that more than a political answer right uh that that has been my uh my my experience now excuse me 
taking into account that one or two people will tell you uh, this is terrible. I'm I'm leaving. This is useless. If you do this, um, you know, I'm your you know your free software or whatever, and you, you just uh, leave. That that's that's going. But some people are ornery. That's not necessarily something bad <laughs> that uh, you did. But that has happened. There are multiple stories across, um, because EMS is so old. There are multiple uh, points in which non-free software intersected with EMS because of multimedia, and uh, we had to go the other direction. And so far, it has served EMS well. It's like the the project has has died as a as a result. Of course, can't prove a negative. Don't know where we would be if we had taken uh, gone down that route. I'm pretty sure we would be in GNU ELPA, and I think uh, being so quickly integrated with uh, Emacs is a huge benefit to EMMS because it's it allows people to install it very easily. And. Those are all the questions that I can see.